Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basic Graphs of Trigonometric Functions, Range of the Cosine of X. To order this complete CRAM session, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. If this isn't the topic you're looking for, also inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order personalized packages and other subject areas. Be sure to spread the word to your friends and classmates who also need to cram. Let's cram this topic, range of cosine x. Range of cosine x. And before we actually delve into the range, I just want to remind you of what the cosine of x is. So here we see a rendition of a right triangle. We have the initial side of the angle of interest. And here we're calling our angle theta because we don't want to double up on variables since the x coordinate is called x. So the initial side of this angle theta begins on the positive x axis and the terminal side ends um, in quadrant one and intersects the origin to form the angle theta. And then when you map out the x coordinate and the y coordinate, you get what looks like a tr right triangle. So this angle is said to be in standard position because its vertex is at the origin, initial side on the positive x-axis, as previously mentioned, and it's an acute angle whose terminal side ends in quadrant one. We see that the ray formed is going to become the hypotenuse of this right triangular formation. And again, it's acute because it's bound between the quadrantal angles zero degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, so any angle like this, acute within, um, you know, it's gonna be called a reference angle. So theta can also be called theta reference. If you were to shift it over here, it would be a reference angle. If you flipped it over here, it would be a reference. All acute angles um, are reference angles when drawn in this quadrant map here. Okay, so with this, the cosine of theta is going to be the x coordinate, which can either be positive or negative if you're in quadrants two or three, divided by the magnitude, I should have indicated magnitude here, of the ray. Okay, so the ray is always going to be positive because the measure, uh, magnitude is a distance measure and distance, it has like a square term, so it's always going to be positive, okay? All right, so that's why sometimes you have angles with positive cosines, but then if they're um, obtuse and in quadrant two or three, they're gonna be um, negative. And you can also have the cosine of an angle that does not come from a right triangle, okay? But this is just a basic example. So this is the concept of the cosine. But then for all values of theta, we can map out their cosines on another graph. It gets more complicated. So what is the range of the function y equals the cosine of x? I'll give you a moment to think, and if you're totally confused, just sit tight. I promise by the end you'll have clarity. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to arrive at the answer. Here we have our map of the function y is equivalent to the cosine of x, and we see that on our x-axis, we have uh, radian measures, okay? So the, the range, I wanna remind you, is the set of all possible values for the dependent variable, usually referred to as y, as here in a, are an example. And here, the range can simply be determined without actual mathematics, by um, finding all the y values where the graph exists. And if you watch my other current sessions, which you definitely need to order, you would have known that the domain of, um, or the, all the independent values or the x values of y equals the cosine of x is going to be all real numbers, which include rational such as zero, negative two, you know, all values of numbers except for um, imaginary numbers that have the square root of negative one. So you would have known that, yeah. So the, the y value or the range is going to exist for all real numbers. And just based here on visual inspection, we see that uh, the dependent variable or the range 
um, goes basically from negative one, which it can also equal up to positive one, okay? So the range is negative one is less than or equivalent to, <laughs> excuse the sound of traffic in the background, it wakes you up anyway. The, I'm doing this in my car. The range is um, negative one, is less than or equivalent to y, which is net less than or equivalent to one, okay? All right, so for more clarity, order the complete cram session. Good luck studying.